Hey guys, this is Dave Witcher, President of FFL Velocity. Welcome to Warrior Podcast, and it's uh, my pleasure really to introduce Shadi today. And uh, he is, uh, well, I had the pleasure of meeting him probably about 18 months ago, maybe something like that. I remember sitting there with you, and you might could share it because I want you to share your story to start off. And sure. a lot of people here at FFL, we know you, right? But people watching this may not know you. So if you could just share, but I will tell you this, he uh, protected, I don't even know how to do, do those numbers, over 100,000 100, families, is that correct? About 1,000 families. 1,000 families. Over 1,000, yeah. Over 1,000. I don't know. See, it sounds like I'm trying to equate those numbers like that. It was a lot. <laughs> and he... Um, you know, he, he definitely takes care of a lot of people a month. I mean, I guess, what, 100 or so, or close to 100 a month, 80 to 100, maybe something right. like that. So he helps Around a lot there, of yeah. families. Yeah, but tell us real quick about your background. Uh, for those that don't know you, you know, how you came to FFL, anything you want to share there? Sure. So, again, my name is Shadi. Um, I have been here, actually, October 1st will be two years. Um, so I haven't been here pretty long yet, but one thing I do know is, um, this business has changed a lot, uh, changed my life a lot to, to a lot of ways. And um, I really think that a lot of people coming into this business, they think that it's, it's going to get rich quick kind of thing. It is not. It does take a lot of work and effort, but the results are big. And you came from, I remember when I talked to you the first time, you were up in Ohio, if I remember, right? Correct. And, mm-hmm. when, you, and you, when you came to FFL. You had a convenience store, I think, business, correct? I had a convenience store. was back in um, Ohio, uh, but when I came down to this business, I came down from um, a different car- uh, company. I was doing uh, flooring. I sold flooring for them. Um, but before that, I was a business broker, and right before that, I owned a convenience store, correct? Okay, I remember. And I remember the first time I sat with you, I guess it's been over. It's been over a year now, and uh, we developed a relationship. And you know, Shadi calls me from time to time. Love this guy. He's great. Um, he works on John Wetmore's team and those guys, and great team. And Dan, you know, obviously, and uh, the, the whole team. So we're grateful for all those guys. And uh, anyway, I remember sitting there with you, and I was asking you how many, you know, how hard you worked and why you worked so hard. And you, do you remember what you told me at that time? Mm-hmm. What was that? Do you remember? Family. It was family. Um, one of the things, um, you know, I wanted to bring my family into this country. Um, right now, and I share this actually, you know, it's a family thing, but being able to support my family in general, okay, it's just what's amazing about this. So uh, being able to support family back in Israel, being able to support my family over over here in in, in you know in the United States, um, I mean it's been nothing but blessing. And I think um, I don't like to say anybody can do it, but everybody should do it if they have the they just have to have the willingness and the ability to to be able to do something like this. You know, be away from family for you know seven days a week, not seeing your family much. I mean it's not easy. I never thought it was going to be easy, but you just have to put the effort in it. So. Yeah, and you do. You put extraordinary effort. You put a lot, of, you know, from work ethic standpoint. There's not, not too many people that I would say, hey, I'll match that guy and say he works as hard as me, but you're one of those guys. And uh, you inspire a lot of people, so I appreciate that. But, you know, you came from Israel, right? You're, you know, even your language, you had to learn how, I mean, you've overcome so many things. Could you talk about like your mindset? So like I know it's about family, but where, where did that come from? Where did that drive come from? So there's one time I share. I, I'm gonna share a story here. I had, uh, and I'm sure my mom would watch this and she's gonna laugh. Yeah. Um, I had this uh, this uh, issue one time where I couldn't even pay my rent. Okay. And uh, I was kind of getting evicted, so I actually. Um, you know, called my mom, giving up, like, all right, mom, I'm giving up, I want to go back to Israel, you know. I remember my mom said something to me. She was like, you know, this is your home. You come here anytime you want. But I know for a fact I didn't raise a failure. Mm. Now, you come here anytime you want. This is your home. But I didn't raise a failure. So, 
and and she got me right on the spot you know like yeah i'm not a failure i'm gonna do whatever it takes to make it happen right um it's kind of like it was kind of tough love kind of thing you know and it kind of got me back on yeah i came here for a goal i came here to do something and i'm not going back without achieving that goal you know and and that's the the mindset that you you just want to be at it's you know you can't keep um you can't keep waiting for things not to be hard anymore you know life is gonna be hard just deal with it you're gonna have to be away from family deal with it you know it's um it's, it's part of the business as long as you just get used to being hard then it becomes easy eventually just get used to the hard time now did you i don't i think i you may have answered this question when you first started were you dialing the phone i know to run the amount of appointments you run now you have someone that you, you trust that helps yeah with that and people can do i have that. two actually okay. yeah uh one thing i will i do have a dialer who does my appointments for me um my advice to everyone who wants to do that don't do that because you want to be lazy I mean, I know a lot of people who want to get a dollar so they can be at home doing nothing or be whatever. It's it's just not worth it. Um, the whole point of getting a dollar is to improve your income. And if you're not improving your income, you only have the same income because you're not putting the same, you know, appointments in. I mean, it literally you're you're just wasting more money at this point, which kind of put you behind. Um, the whole point of me getting the. Um, you know, getting into the um, dialer part is I wanted to make sure to have, um, you know, to have more time in the field and simple as that. But um, you, I would say you'd have to book at least 30 appointments a week, at least easily if you want. Um, and then after that, if you need more like the 45 and 50 appointments a week, that's when you hire a dialer. Yeah. It's when you say that, and, and I knew that was your, your situation, but I, I said that too. You know, I would hire a dollar just so I could get more appointments, not because I could be less work, you know. So I love that. But did you dial at all in the beginning or no? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. okay. I was dialing my butt off. I was dialing like the what, three, <laughs> four, five months, five months in. Yeah. Um, I was dialing my butt off on that. And, um, you know, I was like the first guy in the office dialing, 7 a.m. in the morning, and um, leaving at you know, 8.30 p.m. at night. So Yeah, and, and be transparent. I mean, you, you had a little bit of a challenge, right? You're, I mean, you speak English, right? You, you're good, but you, again, you have an accent to overcome. I mean, let's just be real. I mean, you do. It's not as simple for me, right? I mean, it's not as simple, 100%. right? It was a challenge you had to overcome, correct? Correct. What about what about in the home? Um, what are some things you do in the home? Because I'm sure, I mean, because a little bit bigger than me. He's like a linebacker. Um but, you know, again, you're meeting people for the first time, you know, mm -hmm. what are some things that maybe you had to overcome and then how you can help other people overcome those same things? Maybe, maybe not fear because, you know, your faith and things like that, but, but there might, there might've been, right? Huh. So the one thing you do have to be very uh, confident in the home, even if you don't know what you're doing, um, the minute you hesitate on things you're you definitely like right there you lost the sale um so you have to be very confident um you have to have um you know you have to overcome objections properly um without being rude but being direct um don't be afraid to challenge your clients um there's certain things that a lot of people are afraid to do that i had to overcome and do it myself right um and and i really think that a lot of people could do this if they put the effort in um and you know being direct with the client without being afraid of being kicked out or afraid of the client being mad at them because it's you know it's common sense i mean it's like the asian when they call and be like oh i think the client likes me um he likes me a lot and he said that he's gonna uh, buy from me next week when i know like mm -hmm. i had to break it to you sir but they don't like you you know <laughs> as simple as that you know it, it's just you know you can't be friends with your client you have to keep it professional you have to keep it business you have to be very direct you have to over you know overcome their objection properly and make sure you're confident with what you're doing and make sure you're confident with what you what you're saying and you're not just sitting there and um 
hesitant on everything you're trying to say or trying to think on how to overcome objection because that's when you lose the client. So you had to go through a lot of time to get to that point, right? It wasn't like the first time you went in, it was like that, right? It was through True. a lot of activity. Now you've gotten even, you've done so much more, obviously, so you're obviously super confident. What are some things that you say to set the table? So to overcome objection before they even come, could you give us some tips on maybe some sure. things you said as you set so, the table? Some of the things I do is, Mr. Klein, can I have a bottle of water, please, right? Um, I'm just trying to see their response and how they respond. Second thing I do is, you know, I throw a couple of jokes here and there. And I don't throw jokes for anything. You know, it's the same jokes I throw all the time. But what these jokes does for me, it actually help, help me get the client to, um, you know, to, to uh, what the word I'm looking for. Bit. Like, like relax, like, like give them a little confidence, you know, give them a little trust, right? So, you know, and what also helps me feel the client out if they're like, have sense of humor or if they're not or, or anything like that, right? So I throw sometimes a jokes, like if they're bald, I'd be like, hey, I guess you and I, we use the same barber. Or <laughs> and they start laughing, you know, or, or if, you know, like stuff like that, I throw like, a, you know, or I guess you're using head and shoulder like me, don't you? You know, and and just <laughs> like, you know, I throw a little jokes. And, and at first, it. yeah. And, and I just show them that I'm sense of humor. I'm not just a robot sitting in there following mm -hmm. steps and doing whatever. I'm just, it's just a humor. I'm just giving them a little, little something to laugh at. Then eventually I get down to business. I just let the client know, hey, listen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get back to what I'm here for because I'm trying to, um, I have nine families trying to help. Um, I really enjoy the conversation with you because I am building a report with them, by the way. I forgot to mention that. So mm -hmm. I build a report first, but then I let them know I'm going to get back to what I'm here for. And then eventually while I'm, when I was building a report, I already figured out a lot of things about them, right? Because we're having conversations. Right. So I already I'm assuming what their why is. I'm not asking them what their why. I'm assuming based on the conversation we had, uh, Mr. Dave, I assume we're doing this protection today to make sure that you both kids can keep a home paid off, paid for free and clear. And even if you're dead, is that correct? Yeah. So I actually just throw it at them. I'm assuming what we're doing it for. I'm not asking them because if I'm asking, they kind of try to, you know, throw a little bit BS and put their guard back up again, right? Mm -hmm. But when I'm assuming, they, they figure out, they already figured this out, right? But the third thing is, you know, when you ask questions to your clients, not, um, ask questions you already know the answer to. You know, I'm certain thing like, when I'm building a report with the client, I'm building a report because I'm getting all my answers out of that report. I already know exactly all the answers from my questions. Now, when I'm asking the client, I already know he, what, what the answer is going to be. It's just like the detective, when they ask questions, they already know the answer, right? Kind of same mentality. And just yeah. take control. The guy who asks questions always wins. So, because you're controlling the conversation, you're leading the conversation. You mentioned challenging earlier. Um, what would be an example yeah. of that? Example of... Um, like I share a couple of things with them, like, hey, Mr. Klein, like, like last night, I was, I sat down with this wonderful woman, right? And she had her guard up a little bit. She had no idea what the appointment is about, which obviously you and I, we both know that's a BS because we told her on the phone what the appointment is about. But in general, I showed up, we sat down, we uh, went over the, the, um, um, you know, the thing with her and she didn't think that she needs it because she had something through work. Now, basically, I told her, ma'am, I had to break it to you, but the ones who work you don't own, that's considered a group insurance. You don't own anything that is your employer owns it. They can get rid of it anytime they want. It means you quit, retire, fire, disappear. That insurance is gone. You're not going to have that insurance anymore. So that's one thing I basically said to her. And then eventually I told her, ma'am, no offense, but this is a matter of life and death. Okay. Um, she giggled. I'm like, I know. I know it's kind of funny now, but when you die tomorrow, it's not that funny. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if God forbid, God forbid. If something happens to you today, the more at least you're covered. Here's a certain thing that um, I explained to her. I told her, it's not a matter of if you're going to use this policy. It's a matter of when you're going to use it. And my job is to make sure that when you two kids call me and say, I'm going to, you know, call me to tell me that you passed away and be there and help them out. Okay. So at this point, at this point, since you don't have any coverage in place, because your work is not a kind of coverage that we look at, 
I need you to grab your checkbook. I need you to grab your ID. We can get this started right now for you. Well, and obviously that's what she did. So that's what I meant with challenging the client. It's more of, it's not like, hey, can I have your checkbook, please? Or I think I need your writing account number. You're just sounding hesitant. It, it's like, like how are you gonna get paid if you're if you're not willing to ask for what's really proper to get this policy through? I mean, it's your business. You gotta ask to get paid for your work. So yeah. yeah. Now I didn't ask you this whole question, but I know you're married. How many kids do you have? I have one. Yeah. And um, okay. I'm actually the, getting my two. The baby's, um, the baby's how old? Two year old. Two and yeah, a half now. A, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You were saying what? I'm sorry. Um, th we're going through an, uh, adoption now. So. Okay. Um, my wife and I um we can't bear, well my wife can't bear any more kids due to health issues. So we're okay. um planning going through adoption and and. You know, and I think that's going to be a blessing. It is so. a blessing. I don't know if you, you knew this. Um, you have four grandchildren. One of them's adopted. Did you know that? Mm -mm. Adopted? Yeah. Wow. No, I never yeah, knew that. A blessing. Yeah, and, and um, one of my daughters was unable to have, you know, children for almost six years. And we, the church, we pray every Sunday, you know. And then just recently, it's overwhelming when you go to church and they're up on stage with, the baby and you know dedicating to the Lord and it's like man you're just like oh my goodness like this same child I prayed for for so long so I'll be praying for you for the right you know because I know you. that God's going to present that amazing child to you but Atlas is his name he's uh, he's amazing he was actually born two days apart from another grandchild which it, think about that I <laughs> mean what are the chances of that happening because we had another 100%. daughter that was pregnant yeah he's a super blessing that he's uh, almost 17 months old now so wow uh, I can't wait to what hear congrats. about that. Congrats yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah, well, congrats on your situation because I, I know that's going to happen. It's going to be a blessing. So, and, and you, you know what? That any child to have a, a dad like you, I don't know your wife. I haven't met her yet, but I'm sure she's an amazing person. Um, yeah, she is. Do. I'm very fortunate to have her. Yeah, so. we're blessing for us to be able to work like we do. We got to have that, right? In, exactly. Um, so, a strong wife is, it certainly matters. Um, mm -hmm. What are some other things, I mean, Shadi, that you'd want to share? Like, you know, a new agent's watching this, somebody's watching, maybe thinking, hey, is FFL the right place for me? What, what was a big thing for you? Why why did you choose FFL? Because it's obviously worked out great for you. Um, I know you work hard. You could probably go, there's no doubt in my mind that we could go anywhere and be successful. Why? Because we're going to work hard. We have a good attitude, things like that. But why FFL? So, <clears throat> FFL actually, I mean, come on now. You have a high comp rate. You have no contract. You're a vested day one. I mean, it's it's not rocket science. I mean, it, it's really not. A lot of people like to. They're afraid of the challenge. They're afraid to um, the changes because they got comfortable in the position they are in. They're comfortable making 100 grand a year, 150 grand a year. They don't want to leave that and go do 300,000. And they're not. They're just afraid. You know. And unfortunately, that's why when I said when I said not anybody can do it. When I meant that, I meant like, because not anybody willing to to challenge themselves and, and see what their ability. Here's the one thing I know for a fact. Okay, we all have the same ability because God created us all equal. He did not create you any different than me or me different than you. Okay, the one thing difference is the willing. I'm, you might be willing to work harder than me. I might be willing to work harder than you. This guy might will be willing to work harder than both of us. It's all about willing. It had nothing to do with, oh, no, he has special ability. I have no special abilities. I'm just, you know, a human being like everybody else. All I'm doing is just working harder than everybody else. That's all, all it is. I mean, it's not rocket science. I can promise you that. Yeah. Hey, what do you, do you, do you find yourself, because we have issues, right? I mean, we do. Like, it could be health issues. It could be family things you're going through. Yeah. I mean, everyone has things. Have you 100%. found that when you're in the house, when you're in the home, because I know for me, this is the way I was. And I'm, I'm assuming the same for you. When you're in the field, you're in the field, meaning you're focused and you're executing on what your job is, right? Which is to protect families. Is that how you work? Is that how your mind works? Where, like, you're out in the field. It, it's not that things go away, but you're able to focus on 
what you're doing, which is serving families. Is that what you do? Correct. You're, you just keep the focus 100% into the business and get take everything else out of your mind. It's just the way, you know, if you're, you know, a sport fan, like, and you have a game going on tonight, but, you know, you have commitment to some appointments you go to, it's okay to lose that game. That game's not going to pay you. You can record it and watch it later. Focus on the field. Focus on your business. I mean, everybody has, you know, like, distraction, you know, and, and that, that they uh, feel like those distractions, you know, that takes away from their time, whether it's a football, whether it's you. I mean, I love MMA. Okay. Thank Yet I haven't, I haven't, I haven't watched MMA for a while because <laughs> I know Saturdays are the best times to run. I am not going to not, I'm not going to watch MMA. What I can do is I have a DVR. It records everything for me. I come home after work to help all my clients. I can come here, sit down on my couch and watch MMA. To my point, I don't need to go out of my way, you know, just to do that and, and waste, waste my time with that because all I'm doing is I'm not I'm not being really committed to my business, and this business does take commitment. Without commitment, you're not gonna really make it happen. Yeah, I love that. It's funny because I just, <laughs> I'll record the I'll buy the fight sometimes at night and I won't even watch it until the next morning. Isn't that yeah. funny? You know, that's how because they're yeah. still gonna be there. You know, even if it's like yeah, ten it's... o'clock and I'm home, I might watch the first one and then just turn it off and whatever. Right. The same you gotta thing. spend time with your wife too, right? <laughs> you Indeed. Little, I mean, you know. I mean, I get, I get like, you know, my friends be calling me like, "Oh, did you see the fight last night?" I'm like, no, not yet. I'll watch no, it tonight. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Uh, don't tell me. <laughs> I'll watch it know. tonight. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I love you that. Know, you just man. have to, you have to be committed to it. You know, and a lot of people are not willing to do that. They're, you know, they think that, you know, that they're afraid to invest into leads, I guess, and, and it's it's kind of sad. But all we could do is like direct, like you can direct the horse to the water, but you can force him to drink. So, yeah, the opportunity well, is right there for you. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Anytime I can talk to you, man, I just always enjoy your heart and I appreciate you and to taking the time today and sharing with us. I know there's some things, some tips and different things you've given us and, and uh, I appreciate it. But as we wrap this thing up, is there anything else that, and somebody's watching this. First of all, how they get a hold of you. We, you know how I like to do that. If they want to work with Shadi, they should. Uh, we just want you to hear with FFL. We can help you change your life if that's what you want to do. And if you're willing to work hard, be teachable, coachable, things like that. Um, but any last comments you'd like to share with anybody that might be watching this? Um, I would say don't be afraid to invest in yourself. And, um, you know, you can make it happen. Only you. Nobody else can make it happen but you. I love that. Well, I'm glad you counted on you, and I'm, I'm glad. I'd bet on you, too. <laughs> so Thank you. I love you, bro. I appreciate you so much. We How do they get a hold of you, Shadi? What's the best way for them to um, contact you? So they can always contact me at my cell. Um, if I don't answer, I'll be with a client. But I always, if I leave a voice, I'll always call back. Um, my cell will be 614-370-8737. Yeah. Shadi, if you ever text me or call me or I didn't answer or call you back? No, you always call me back. Right. That's what we do, right? We, we do. We're exactly. friends. We're business partners. But at the end of the day, we're here for you. So reach out to myself. Reach out to Shadi. We have a lot of people here to help you at FFL. Love to have you be a part of the team. And I uh, hope this made a difference. I always figure out one thing, Shadi, is I'll get somebody to say, hey, man, I watch that podcast. Or, hey, this guy came here. We have a guy, Melvin Tejada. He wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for a podcast. So I don't even think about, hey, do we get 7,000 views or we get whatever. If it's just one person, that this makes a difference today. As Shadi said, it helps you. And that's what matters. So. Uh, we got God to dress, right? So I love you, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching the Warrior Podcast with us. And Shadi, thanks for taking the time. I know you're extremely busy. Keep serving families. Can't wait to watch you uh, talk on stage in February, getting all kinds of awards like you always do. And, and, and you deserve every one of them because you're working hard. And I know you're not doing it for that. You're doing it because you love the people and you take care of your family 100%. and serving the agents. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for being on, brother. I appreciate thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Appreciate you having thank me. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, brother. Bye.